My fiancé, 24 male, and I, 23 female, have only been engaged for about six months and didn't want to wait too long so we'll be getting married in less than three months. We are only inviting about 50 people but decided to make our wedding as memorable as possible so rented a villa on the mountainside for 10 days. The wedding will span over multiple days with a combination of ceremonies from both my fiancé's culture and my own. The villa is near some scenic areas, hot springs, waterfalls, etc. So we have created an itinerary that involved all the invited guests and us visiting these places. We have already paid for a couple of the attractions, like bungee jumping, for the guests that wanted to participate. Everything from the clothing of the bridal party to the trips nearby, my fiancé and I will fully cover the cost. We both earn well, so this is something we wish to do as it will allow our families and friends to enjoy themselves without worrying about money. Well, my fiancé's older sister, I'll call her Allie, and her fiancé have not been able to come up with a decent wedding plan yet. They have been engaged for a couple of years, but do not earn as well as my fiancé and I do, so couldn't afford an entire wedding. Allie talked to us and asked if she could hold her wedding at the villa we rented on some of the days that we wouldn't be having our ceremonies and were going to go out instead. Most of the guests she wanted at her wedding are already invited, so it wouldn't be much of a hassle and the villa is going to be decorated for our wedding ceremonies anyway, so it might as well be used for hers. She additionally suggested that the briding party's clothing could also be used for her ceremonies. In all this, she is willing to pay 40% of whatever the wedding was going to cost us. Up to this point, I was firmly against it, as those days were set aside for our guests to go out and enjoy themselves instead of being cooped up in the villa. However, she brought up the fact that if she chose a latter day for her wedding, people will question why her younger brother got married before her, as this is considered shameful in my fiancé's culture. People might talk of my sister-in-law negatively and make rumors like her fiancé isn't serious about marrying her. We told her to give us some time to think and have talked amongst ourselves since. My fiancé has left the decision entirely up to me and promised to stand by me regardless of what I choose. He said while he does love his sister and wants to help her, this is something we have wanted for a long time, so even if he is willing to make the sacrifice, he will not ask that of me. Whatever the decision may be, we will present it as a collective decision, rather than placing the entire weight on me. I don't know what I should do now. Should I let my sister-in-law have her way or go about my wedding as previously planned at the expense of upsetting her and possibly my fiancé's parents? Oh, this is interesting. I advise not to allow her to hold her wedding during your 10 days. She has been engaged for years, so she has no one to blame for the non-wedding. First, if you let this happen, you will never be able to celebrate your wedding as an occasion for you and your husband. Her name will be included for every anniversary. Second, I personally wouldn't want to have wedding pictures that look almost the same as my sister-in-law. I can see why it would be convenient since everyone will already be there, and offering to pay 40% means she's not trying to mooch off of you. If you decide to allow it, I would make her choose different outfits for the bridal party. Having it in the same location is one thing, but everyone dressing the same takes away from your wedding. It's a hard spot she's put you in. Just go with your gut. I am currently engaged to my partner of four years, and we are expecting our first. Slightly unexpected, due to a birth control issue, but will be adored regardless. Child in a couple of weeks. We live in New Zealand and have roughly similar asset levels going into getting married so we weren't planning on getting a prenup. However, my grandmother, 98, has recently been very unwell and isn't expected to live another year. When she dies, the remaining wealth from the former family dairy beef farm will be divided between their children, grandchildren, like me, great-grandchildren, like my child, with a predetermined one-third of the total going to each generation. There are some major caveats to inheriting anything that include, one, anyone eligible must prove via DNA to be related to her, this is largely because one of my uncle's wives cheated around the time their first child, who is now 18, was conceived. Even though my uncle adores her like a daughter and the whole thing has been old news for a long time, this has dug it back up again and she will likely, pending test, not inherit anything, as it's clear she's not a full sibling to her two brothers based on her appearance. 2. Spouses don't get anything if they have a prenup or are divorced. 3. Children of divorced marriages don't get anything, even if they prove a relation. 4. Children of prenup marriages don't get anything, even if they prove relation. This was largely influenced by the oldest of my uncles, who was twice divorced with three kids, who he lost custody of and is currently in a prenup marriage to a girl half his age, 
and he loves gloating about how watertight the will and trust are. Given my grandmother's ill health, my parents are pushing me to get a prenup, as this will disqualify my child leaving my niece the only great-grandchild eligible to inherit anything. This is because my sister was a teen parent who has had continual alcohol D issues and is very much skint and supported by our parents. Due to the number of cousins there are, my sister and I won't get much from the one-third of our generation share, but my niece will get the entire one-third share for her generation. My parents believe they can use my niece's share to set my sister and her child up with a house and passive income, and think it would be unfair for my child to be included in the inheritance, as my partner and I have no financial issues. Now, I love my sister, but this is ridiculous. She can't be trusted with a nice vase because she will try to fleece it for money. Giving her a substantial amount of money and expecting her to suddenly change will only end badly. Plus, it's unfair to my child. This has turned into a huge family argument, and I'm being called selfish by essentially the majority of my family. Am I the a-hole for refusing to get a prenup and making my child ineligible for the inheritance? Not the a-hole. It seems everyone is looking out for your niece and sis. There may be a situation or time when you guys may be in a difficult spot and might need that money in the future for your child. You've got to think, what is the best option for you and your child? And if that is a no to prenup, then stick to your decision. My immediate family is anyway. Multiple members of the extended family are pissed at my parents for supporting my sister and helping her retain custody of my niece because if she was forced to give her up, then she'd become ineligible to inherit and then the inheritance would be divided in half by generation instead of in thirds, which would obviously benefit my uncles in particular greatly. Not the a-hole. Your grandma has some weird ducking rules. Say your niece, well, sister, would stand to get $100,000. She'll still get $50,000. That's money she, your sister, has done literally nothing for. It's just bonus money. You were never planning on getting a prenup. By the looks of things, because you don't feel it's needed, etc. You definitely don't want to get one to intentionally disqualify your child from your grandma's inheritance. That your family thinks you should is also ducking weird. You could promise to put half into a bank account for your child to use once she reaches 18, 21, 25, whatever, and the other half to go towards expenses as she grows. If you're perfectly financially comfortable, then you could put it all away for her in something which earns interest. But honestly, your family has no right to the information about what you choose to do with the money your grandma is leaving your child. If you never wanted the prenup in the first place and getting one would stop your child getting bonus money, don't get one. My, 23 female, brother, 32 male, have always had a strained relationship. My brother is a devoted Roman Catholic with very conservative views. I am a liberal lesbian. We have never seen eye to eye, but regardless of this, our fathers, 64 male, love has always been able to tie the family together. He worked extremely hard for his business and to provide a good life for our family, even when doing it alone. My mother passed of cancer when I was about four and he never remarried. Our state is pretty large, roughly 4.2 million USD for each child after my dad passes. One of my father's wishes in order to qualify for his will would be to never legally contest or sue either sibling for their share of the will. The party who does forfeits their entire cut of the estate. This is on the first page of the will and was repeated to us several times. A few weeks ago, a cousin, 28 male, Lou, was at my brother's house just catching up when my brother admitted he planned on suing me for my inheritance. My cousin was even able to snap a photo of the engagement letter from the attorney when he wasn't looking and sent it to me. Needless to say, I was pissed. I felt hurt and betrayed in a way I couldn't even really understand. I told our dad immediately who called my brother to confront him. My brother denied it at first, but admitted to it after my dad kept pushing him. My dad said how disappointed he was in my brother for doing something so slimy to his own sister. My dad then told me to get a good lawyer and then proceeded to call his attorney to let them know what happened. My sister-in-law, 31, female, who also doesn't like me, called and, as it turns out, they're expecting another baby. I currently have five nieces and nephews from my brother. My brother and his wife are afraid they wouldn't be able to handle another child financially. Now, my brother and his wife are telling our family what happened, and while some are on my side, most of our family is calling me an a-hole for not offering the half of the inheritance back to my brother because now his family will struggle due to my selfishness. 
I've even had relatives come to my house just to curse me out on my front lawn. My dad suggests I stay strong and don't give in. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. If your brother was getting $4 million, then he wasn't suing you because he didn't think he could afford another baby. The only logical conclusion then is that he was suing you purely out of his own bigotry and spite for you being a liberal lesbian. That being said, I would take part of that money that he is no longer getting and set it aside for your nieces and nephews' college education. Maybe set up some kind of trust where they don't actually get the money. They just send their college tuition, housing, and book bills to someone and they cut a check and pay the bill. That way, your brother can't take the money for himself or guilt them into giving him some. Not the a-hole. The unmitigated greed of your brother is unbelievable. 4.2 million and him and wife think they'll struggle financially? Buy him a vasectomy as a goodbye present. This story is weird. Why was the brother going to sue? Theoretically, he's got to have a better reason than, I want the money. Also, Dad's a surprisingly active participant in this. Are we assuming he's going to be dead soon? Because 64 isn't that old. I'm not entirely sure what my brother's and his lawyer's angle on this was going to be, but it would probably have been claiming me as mentally incompetent for the fact that I've been to a psych hospital twice when I was a teen for depression-related issues. I also have a slight hunch that he would have used my preference towards women against me in court, though I am unsure of how. Also, my dad's not dead. He is older and gave us a scare when he slipped a few months ago and broke his hip. My father died last year. Beforehand, he showed me the final copy of his will. It was simple. 50% to me, 50% to my half-sister. I wasn't always close with my dad. Parents split when I was young. And as a result, I've never been close with my half-sister. She's much older than me. We've never lived together, and until last summer, we hadn't seen each other in 10 years. She has two daughters, one of whom I've never met. At this meeting, she did mention she'd hoped Dad would give something specifically to her daughters. But I shrugged this off, as I knew he hadn't, and I assumed she must not have seen the will. A few months later, and upon sorting the estate, I'm waiting for her to send me some documents, including the will, to sign. I message to ask if she's received them yet, and if she can forward them to me. This message is the reply I get. I need to talk to you. Dad did want to leave something to the girls, but was too ill to sort it. Again, when shown the will and multiple times discussing it with him later, my dad didn't once say he'd wanted to change anything. Asking for clarification, and genuinely as calm a tone as I write this post, stating that he'd been through the will with me beforehand, I simply ask what exactly Dad said he wanted to change. From seemingly nowhere, I then receive this exact response. Hang on, what's your problem with this? I don't want the money, it would go straight into the girl's account. I'm surprised you were even doubting it. Think about it, Dad loved my girls and wanted them looked after. I spent a lot more time with Dad, so had more opportunities to discuss this. He even had their bank details in the care home, but I couldn't ask him to call the bank as he was too ill and too tired. Ducking hell, are you for real? Asking her to calm down, stating all I ever did was ask what Dad said and how much he wanted to give them. I eventually get clarification that they never discussed specifics. He just said he wanted them looked after. Despite not being close with them and not having even met both daughters, as someone with no children of my own, I had previously considered offering some of the money as extra to them. But due to being largely kept out of the loop of funeral organization, and in the end, only being told about the burial of the ashes literally less than 48 hours beforehand, I realized as we really aren't close, that's not my concern. And if that's what Dad really wanted, he'd have included it in the will in the first place. This latest exchange just cements that feeling. Would I be the a-hole for this? Again, we're not close, and I can tell you with certainty that once this is over, we'll go back to rarely speaking to each other, but they are technically my nieces. Not the a-hole. She got 50%. She is fully capable of giving, setting aside some of that for her daughters. Sounds like she's just trying to get you to cough up more of yours. Not the a-hole. Your father would have left the girl's money if he wanted to. My assumption is that he split the estate in half, assuming your half-sister would take some of her inheritance and leave it to her girls instead of keeping it all to herself. You have no obligation to give away any part of your inheritance. His will was reviewed prior and no changes were made. As you said, he never mentioned the granddaughters. Keep your money. 